Hi, this is Gotti Elkon with Selig Film News. We're here with the team behind Jasmine. We've got the filmmakers uh, Dax Phelan and Jason Tobin, as well as producer manager extraordinaire Stratton Leopold, and one of the great stars, Byron Mann. Um, Dax, Jason, where did you guys come up with this creepy noir story? Do you guys like haunting yourselves or <laughs> chasing after random people? I mean, where did this come from? Um, I suppose the, the very beginning of the story, it started back in um, 2005, so about 10 years ago, and I met um, Jason through Byron Mann when I was in Hong Kong working on another project. And um, Jason um, hadn't played the lead in a film before, but I had seen him in other things and thought he was fantastic. So when he was in LA shooting um, Fast and the Furious, I asked him if he could come to lunch with me and I told him, look, I have an idea for a character and I wanna come up with a story together. You'll play the lead, I'll direct, and we're gonna shoot it on the streets of Hong Kong. And he said, okay, and it all sort of began, began from there. What was it about his pitch that you just were like, I can jump on board this? Um, I think what it was is that, uh, you know, when we met, we, uh, we talked a lot about movies, and we just talked about, not, not even necessarily about this particular project, but um, we were sort of feeling each other out, and we talked about movies, and we found out that we had a, a lot of the same taste in films, and, and I think that's where it sort of started, you know, as, as a collaboration, we sort of, you want to feel out each other's taste and sensibility. Byron actually made a great point last night in the, uh, at the, at the Q&A after the premiere, that a lot of times, uh, you know, a, a good director is about having good taste, and, uh, and I think Byron, you said something like, um, you know, if you got bad taste, then you're screwed, and if a director's got great taste, then you're in good hands, you know. And so that very much was uh, the case with Dax, that we just, we loved a lot of the same movies, and we, um, I think, we became friends very quickly, and it all started from there. It was very organic. It was a, um, it was a, you know, it was a great start to a actor-director relationship. And then about t after a couple of years, we had the script went, uh, written, mm -hmm. and um, you know, no one was paying us to do it, so it was we had to work on it in between other projects. And then it finally got to the point where we wanted to get it made. And so, you know, we'd never produced a movie before, mm -hmm. at least not a feature. And so <clears throat> we, uh, dec I decided to approach Stratton to see if he could, you know, sort of. Uh, guide us through the process and fortunately for us he came aboard to produce and that's when things really started to take off. Well, I'm curious looking at um, maybe even stepping back to, to Byron's involvement um, did you always since you introduced him did you always have the thought that maybe you might be a part of this project or were you kind of later into the game deciding okay I can be the man in the movie? Oh it wasn't me deciding it was them deciding. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I look at this whole project as really, um, even from when we were filming, it was just, it was like a Cinderella project, mm -hmm. you know, in the sense that, um, um, you know, he, there's no reason Dax would be in Hong Kong, he, I mean, he's from the United States, <laughs> then for some reason, 2005, uh, you know, he, it was the first time he came to Hong Kong, and I didn't think he would like it, but he loved Hong Kong, and so much so that he came back like a couple more times and wrote a movie that's set in Hong Kong. And then when I found out he wrote a script, that, you know, the story, and it's set in Hong Kong, he's going to shoot it. He actually got the financing to shoot it. I, was like, I mean, for me, it was like, yes, you know. I mean, it just, it's, it's an honor to be a part of that project, you know. And to see it, you know, five years later, you know, being selected to be part of, you know, Dallas International Film Festival, Hong Kong International Film Festival. I mean, it's, it's a Cinderella story. Definitely. Yeah. It's a Cinderella story. Let's talk about the connection to Dallas and, and SMU and even James even. Mm -hmm. um, this is very much a homecoming. This is special. It, you, you went all o o across the world to film it, but you're bringing it back home. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I came to SMU um, in 1994 to study pre-med, of all things. <laughs> and, um, you know, after my first semester, I think I had three F's, a B, and a, I passed gym, you know, like, and, um, and I just spent a lot of time that first semester staring at walls. Um, 
and it was actually my advisor at SMU who who talked to me at the beginning of the spring semester and she said are you sure you want to be a doctor you know and uh, I said well what do you mean and she said well every time you come into my office we talk about movies and I didn't even know this about myself it took someone outside you know to sort of notice this so she suggested that I take some film courses and um, I started to take some film courses um, introduction to production screenwriting etc and um, and for the first time in my life school didn't feel like school anymore which was a pretty wonderful feeling and um, so the film bug just took over and uh, I wound up um, going to graduate school then in um, Los Angeles at the American Film Institute and started interning at a company called Mace Neufeld Productions at Paramount. And that's how I met Stratton when I was an intern there. So, mm -hmm. Stratton, what is it that made you jump on board a crazy intern from Texas that wants to go shoot in Hong Kong and do all <laughs> weird projects? What was it about Dax that made you think, this is a kid I, I, can, I can follow? Talent, basically mm -hmm. it. Um, when you when you realize that someone has the talent to write, the talent to direct, and, and is also a nice person, mm. you, you want to jump on board then and help. And it, it's been, well, we, we, it, we initially started collaborating on another picture, which we, we'll talk about later, that, that will be our next picture. But um, it's just abject talent. And to, to assemble equally a talented cast, the synergy is wonderful. I mean, it's, you, you see it coming. It's a passion. It's a passion project. You can see it completely there. It's on the screen. I think of other pictures where and I've done over Paramount where maybe it's a little bit less than passionate. Mm -hmm. But this, it's, it's all over the screen. Stratton brings up a great point. This is a tremendous cast, not just Jason and Byron, <laughs> but the women in this are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do yeah. you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put me on the spot, Byron. Um, well, what do you all think about working off, off them? You know, uh, this must have been so much fun. I'll throw that to Byron, Jason. Yeah. I mean, well, uh, let me, why don't I lead into yeah, it, actually. Sure. Um, you know, Jason was the first cast member on board. And, um, you know, Jason's very highly regarded among his fellow actors. So because he was the first person on board, there were a lot of people who, were will who wanted to work with him and were willing to do so for less than their usual fee, which was, you know, really lucky for us. And, um, and the first person we approached... Um, was Eugenia Yuan, who is in a Hong Kong Academy Award winner, obviously, and um, we wanted her for the role of Grace. She was the only person we ever really had in mind, and she wanted to work with Jason, so she came aboard, and that was really the first of several casting coups um, that you know ultimately led to us getting Byron Man. And so, uh, when it came to Sarah Leon. Um, that was a role we've been trying to cast for a long time. We had met with a lot of people, but no one seemed to have that X factor that we were looking for. And uh, Sarah actually came to an open casting call and read with Jason and absolutely blew us away and just walked out of there as if the part had been hers all along, which was really unbelievable. That's the best audition I think I've ever seen. Yeah. But, but then they got to act with her, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when you look at a film, when, at the finished product, you begin to look at it at, you know, objectively. Mm. And every time, I've seen this film like three times now, and the first thing that actually comes to my mind as an objective viewer is, well, this is actually well cast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a well cast movie. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of anyone who, who would be, you know, play that role that Jason's playing, mm -hmm. you know, and Sarah Lynn's role and, and Eugenia's role is like, well, this is a well-cast movie. Yeah. And, you know, just to answer your question, um, I actually only had one scene with Jason where we really, like, go at it, you know, and I remember how um, easy it is, mm -hmm. you know, to, to act with Jason because, you know, I've been acting for 20 years, and if you have a really good actor acting with you, you actually don't have to act that much. Mm -hmm. That's the secret. It's like dancing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all chemistry. And, you know, the better the other actor is and the less you have to work. 
So um, it was it was uh, it was like dancing. It was really effortless. I have to um, echo the same feelings. You know, um, yeah, I mean, in in Jasmine, I spent a lot of time on my own. You know, acting with myself, being with myself, and. I remember um, after a few weeks of, of just, you know, uh, shooting basically by myself, uh, Eugenia showed up for, for her scenes, and it was such a, um, I, I was so relieved, you know, I, I kept saying, thank God you're here, thank you, I'm so happy to be active with you. It's like, it's like being on a, on a desert island for like months, and it's finally see a human being, you know. And, <laughs> And, uh, and and like Byron just said... Um, and, and quite a human being, too. Yeah, quite. Uh, yeah, exactly. And she's such a fantastic actress and so beautiful. Um, uh, she was. It really was effortless to act with her. She's one of these actresses, uh, an actor that um, gives so much with just a, a look, you know. Uh, That's true. And you really don't have to act with her because you you feel like you're experiencing the moment with her. And, um, and then, of course, working with Byron, uh, we, we had actually worked together on a, a film previously. Uh, it's a really bad film. I won't mention the name. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things where you work on a, on a bad film, but then you make great connections. And, um, and uh, so that we worked together. And then so when Byron showed up, it was obviously a great um, experience. Same thing, you know, it's so easy to act with someone who uh, knows what they're doing. And, um, and also, there's also this thing about Byron where... Um, He's so well cast in the role. Like it's easy for me to want to be him. <laughs> you know, I don't have to act that part. And and then you know, Eugenia and and Sarah, it's so easy for me to want to be with them. You know, um, so a lot of it is as much as as there is acting involved. Um, there was a natural. Um, uh, their archetypes, who they are as people, really helped um, with my performance. I will add one little thing. Yeah. You know, there's this one climactic scene in, in the movie yeah. where, um, you know, Jason's character confronts my character. And I'm, I'm looking at the movie and I remember, because we shot this a while ago, and I'm going, man, I, I actually did look kind of scared in that movie, <laughs> in that scene. And I remembered why now, because when we were filming, um, Jason, when he came into the scene, I mean, literally, he came through the door, right? Literally. And then, I actually didn't know what he was going to do because our dialogue was kind of just loose. It wasn't really completely scripted, right? I mean, it was scripted, but we went kind of improvised a little bit. So, but every take he came in, he did something new and unexpected. So I was, ju and I knew he had a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Most important part, yeah. yeah so, you know, um, I was genuinely a little scared because I didn't know what he was going to do. You were scared? Ryu was scared of... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, because, you know, like that line, you know, there's a line, I don't know if I can say that, but there's a line in the movie where he says, you know, do you like knives? I think that was unscripted, so that completely caught me off guard. So I think there was one, one or two, um, t uh, you know, lines in, my, in the movie where you, you see my character asking him, like, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there, there were a few times in the movie where we incorporated improvisation. Um, uh, not because I don't have good actors and they were locked in the line readings or anything like that, but just because I wanted it to be that much more in the moment. And if Byron doesn't know exactly what Jason's going to say, along with other actors in the film, um, you know, there's a real sense of, they're listening because they have no idea what's coming, you know? And so I think we get some wonderful reaction shots off of, off of Byron, you know, because of that. And, you know, at a, at a scene when it's the most important um, to get those reactions. So, but speaking of the climax, I'd just like to add also that, um, you know, obviously there's a, a physical struggle um, that occurs in the climax of the film. and. We were so lucky to have Byron because of his extensive experience in various action movies. He was basically our unofficial stunt <laughs> coordinator, and he was able to show us how to pull off a fight scene um, in a way that, first of all, was safe for everyone involved, but also would look great on film, you know, without, uh, you know, without compromising, really. And... Um, it's, it's really, when you, when you would see the number of people behind the scenes, you'd be shocked by how few people are actually there, you know. It's Byron and Jason, I'm standing 
two feet off to the side, and the cameraman's there. You know, that's it. So it uh, it worked out great, and it, I don't think we would have had that if we'd hired anybody else. You know, truly. Yeah. Actually, I did some flips and somersaults in that scene, but it's called cut out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he, he Hadouken, right, as well. <laughs> the very end. The very end. <laughs> it is such a, a pivotal scene. It looks amazing. It's y'all did an amazing job with that. So thank you for filming that. Yeah. And being a part of it. Um, kind of final question. Not a lot of films bring the full cast. <coughs> bring everyone. It shows something when. Fire and Jason Stratton, you guys are here mm -hmm. for Dax with film. Um, what does that mean for your future? Obviously, you guys are much more than just this an another film. You guys mm -hmm. possibly could be working on future projects, and I'd love to know what's the next step for you guys, and um, what's it like being here together? It feels like um, it's really great to have everybody back together again because it's it's rare that. We're all in the same country, much less the same city. Yeah. So um, to have everybody first at Hong Kong and then at Dallas as well, it just feels like a gift, really. I feel like we're getting away with something, and uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm just so happy. Um, it's a shame that Eugenia couldn't be here, but she's shooting. It's but, definitely a shame. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, certainly to have Stratton here and you know, someone who was there at the beginning of my career and hopefully will be there for a long time to come. Um, you know, it's, it's exciting well, and it's heartwarming. You know, I, I think, Dax, we can also say that um, the next picture will incorporate the same cast, much more. <laughs> it's the same deal, different movie, obviously. But it's one that when I, when I initially met Dax, we talked about that picture, which is called Charlie Two Shoes. And it's a picture of abject loyalty and friendship, mm. a true story. And that'll be the next one. That's interesting because I feel that, you know, that abject loyalty and friendship, that's how I feel about this film as well. So, um, you know, it was, it was awesome to premiere the film in Hong Kong, obviously, for obvious reasons, you know. Um, the film was written there, we shot it there. Um, but in many ways, you know, I'd never been to Texas, never been to Dallas, and coming here and, and, and being here, knowing this is where Dax's film career started, you know, at SMU, and so very, in, in many ways, I feel very, very happy to be here to sort of support Dax and, and acknowledge, like, hey, you know, it, it's like it's like almost going back to see where a great artist started, and, and to know um, that this is where Dax got his start. I mean, we're thrilled to be in Dallas, and you know, the fact that we may be working on Charlie Tissues again. I've never been in an interview where I've gotten a job. So thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad that's that's awesome. Um, well, thank you guys so much, yeah. and thank you guys for for being here. You guys brought a lot of people, so it's it's always a pleasure to have a film that people are passionate about and want to showcase. Jasmine's a wonderful film, and uh, thank you for sharing Charlie Two Shoes. We can't wait. Yeah. So well, maybe we'll be back with that film next. <laughs> yeah. You heard cool. it here first. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.